Hello, hello, rock stars, and welcome. My name is Holly Ann Knight of String and Story, and it is my job to guide you to quote with confidence. Um, welcome to my like kind of funky, blurry, late at night home setup. Um, I'm not used to the light up here being so harsh because oh my gosh, it gets dark at like four freaking thirty in the afternoon. Daylight savings, y'all. Anyway. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is three myths about ruler quilting. Uh, three myths that I used to believe about quilting with rulers, actually, that I have since um, come around about, learned a new way of thinking, and honestly fallen in love with ruler quilting, which for a long time I didn't really think was something that was going to happen. Um, and now I love teaching it. I love seeing how ruler quilting and free motion quilting go together. And most of all, I love watching y'all master new skills feel more confident as quilters and finish those quilts. So if you are here with me live or on the replay, say hi in the chat. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Um, I am at home in Duluth, Georgia, which we'll talk a little bit about uh, more in just a second. Uh, but I just made the trek back up from South Georgia. We went down to Lake Seminole, which is not an area that I was familiar with. But um, as some of you may know, we are on a trek to all the Georgia state parks. And we uh, went to about four over the last five days. Um, and actually stayed down on the lake in South Georgia, and it was lovely. So we braved all the Thanksgiving traffic and made our way back up today, and now I am here with y'all. So, Michelle, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so glad to see you. Happy Thanksgiving to you as well. Hello, Susie in Olympia, Washington. How cold is it up there? I know it's not like as cold as it is other places, but I know like I'm shivery here tonight. I just feel like in my brain, Olympia must be getting cold already. Sue in Hampshire, UK. Welcome, welcome. Sue, it is quite late for you, my dear. I think you might get an extra gold star for being here live. That is amazing. Thank you for tuning in. Susan Ruff, how, how are you? Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, low 40s in Indiana. <laughs> hey, Bev. Monty is on your lap. What a sweet boy. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Moby and Felicia and Havana were all very happy to see us when we got home. Um, in fact, okay, so context for those of you who don't know, Monty used to be our cat. Monty does not do well with children. So after the boys were born, Monty went to go live with Bev. He's much happier with Bev. It's a lot quieter there. Um, but I went to pick up Havana tonight and she does this ridiculous, we call her the jumping bean because whenever I pick her up, she literally jumps all the way up into my arms. Well, I was like, oh, I will kneel down when she comes to me this time so she doesn't have to jump in order to greet me. No, she jumped so hard she like knocked my earring back off. And I was like, good grief. Anyway, Susie, still seeing 50s during the day. Lovely, lovely, lovely. All right, that's that's bearable. That's bearable. Okay, are we ready? Let's jump in. I could chitter chat all night because it's been a minute since I've been on with y'all, but let's jump straight in to three myths about quilting with rulers with me. Holly and Knight of String and Story. In my experience as an educator, our brains really love to freak out when it comes to learning new skills. We perceive them as hard, or we believe uh, that the bits of information we hear that suggest we cannot, in fact, tackle the very skill that we want to learn, right? And quilting with rulers is no exception. I see this a lot with free motion quilting. Everyone is like, free motion quilting is so hard. It is for the professionals. I'm not an artist. I could never do that, right? And I see some of the same narratives around quilting with rulers. So today, what I really want to do is look at some of these myths head on, like I said, myths that I used to believe, right? And debunk them for you. Because if you are curious about quilting with rulers, at the end of our time together, I am going to share with you about Ruler Quilting Academy, which is literally exactly how you can do that, how you can start the process of quilting with rulers very, very soon, be a whole ruler quilting rock star, and really see this new skill set get added to your repertoire as a quilter. All right. So if you're new around here, my name is Holly and Knight. As I mentioned, I've been teaching quilting, especially free motion quilting, but several different techniques since 2017. Um, ruler quilting for the last few years. And I have watched thousands of quilters just like y'all grow in their confidence to finish their own quilt with FMQ, with ruler quilting, with other techniques through my blog, workshops, and digital courses. This, of course, is my cutie family. That's John right there in the front. We call him Hubster a lot because like everybody's called John. So Hubster it is. Um, on my lap is Ian. And then behind me is Jem. Um, and those are our two little boys. Though so they're not so little anymore. Jim turns nine next month. And I'm honestly not prepared. Um, as I mentioned, this is the Fam Bam. Um, many of you are familiar with Havana. She is on, I don't know if y'all can see her. She's on that chair out there. Hi. Hi, Bean. Yeah, you're going to just ever so slightly wag your tail. Okay. 
And then we have two cats, Moby, who is all black, and Felicia, who is a gray fluff ball. Um, and we're actually down to one fish tank. So uh, I spend a lot of my time hanging out in downtown Duluth, hanging out at our shop, String and Story on Main, um, teaching classes, getting to actually help y'all um, figure out fabric and things in person, which is really fun because I do a lot of this, right, where we live in each other's computers. And I love that because it means that we can connect from places like Duluth to the UK, to Washington, to Indiana and beyond, right? And do it, you know, in our sweatpants and sweatshirts and cozied up on our couches and things, right? Uh, but I also love being able to be in person with y'all and see your work and do show and yell and ooh and all over your beautiful quilts, et cetera, et cetera. So if you ever pass through Duluth, do come see us, all right? By the way, um, hard sidebar at the risk of losing y'all. If you missed the email today, Ruby Star Society is on a flash sale today. So if you need a little extra retail therapy after our time together, just a little pro tip. Okay, so bit of housekeeping. Y'all are familiar with this. Turn off all distractions. You've committed to be here for an hour. This is a really excellent opportunity if you happen to be visiting family or have family in town and you just need a minute to close the door and say, I'm so sorry, I'm in a meeting, right? So just and embrace, I would say the quiet. I'm going to talk a while a minute and I am not a quiet human, but you know, embrace the change of pace, maybe, right? Um, and please ask all the questions. That's why I do these lives. That's why it's important to me to have these opportunities for us to connect in real time across time zones and continents and oceans and states, et cetera, right? Because I know, especially if you are inquiring about learning something new, learning ruler quilting for the first time, or maybe you have a foundational level of skill and you're really wanting to take those skills to the next level, um, I know that there's a lot of questions that crop up. This is the place to get them answered. There is no question too basic, okay? All right, so one last thing before we start in earnest. If you have not yet downloaded the Confident Ruler Quilting Workbook, it's wonderful. It's a great companion to what we're going through tonight. It is not a word for word companion, but it has a lot of the same principles kind of all typed out for you. So you don't have to take notes a million miles a minute. So do me a favor and take out your phone and you're gonna open your camera app and you're going to hold it up so that the camera is pointed at this lovely little QR code on the screen, right? Just like this. Gonna look at that. And then you're going to see a little link. See the yellow box? Pop up. Okay? And then when you tap that, as I'm literally doing it with y'all, it is going to take you to the Rockstar Digital Education page. All right? And under free workbooks, you will scroll. Oh, you might have to use little arrows. Like so. The one that says confident ruler quilting workbook and then just hit download you'll put in your email address it'll come straight to your inbox okay so make use of that as a really handy companion to what we're going through this evening like i said a resource to take beyond this evening all right i'm going to give you all a second to do that i'll take a sip of water you know maybe talk slightly less fast it's chilly up here in the loft so i'm like if i talk faster i'll warm up right that makes complete sense. No, it doesn't. <laughs> this is just, it's like, it's Holly Ann math, right? Like all those things that have been going around about like girl math and like hiker math and quilter math. This is Holly Ann math. If I talk faster, I'll be warmer. Completely logical. Not at all. Okay. Let us dive in. The bottom line, if you hear nothing else that I say this evening, I want you to know that you can and will be a ruler quilting rock star. You are incredibly capable. You have learned how to read and write, how to cut with a rotary cutter without losing a finger, how to piece an accurate quarter inch seam. Honey, you can absolutely learn how to quilt with a ruler. And if you're like me, that sometimes, uh, you know, inverse mantra does you a trick, dumber people than you have figured it out. <laughs> So I believe that you are infinitely intelligent, that you have all the capability in the world, and also lots of other folks have figured it out, so you can too. All right? So pull up those bootstraps, let's buckle in, and let's talk about how you can get started quilting like the whole rock star that you are. All right? Three myths about quilting with rulers that I really wish that I had known when I got started, but I've learned on the hard way, and now I get to teach you the easier way. First of all, what is a quilting ruler? Because Let's go through my process of learning about rulers. So I learned about, you know, arc rulers. Well, I learned about regular measuring rulers, right? Second grade, you're learning inches and centimeters. We all did these activities, right? And then I loved art growing up. So I had the metal art ruler. I thought I was very fancy. And then when I learned how to quilt, I learned about rotary cutters. And I knew that you were supposed to put a rotary cutter up against a ruler, but no one taught me about 
putting rulers, right? This is the ruler that every single one of us has. It's about an eighth of an inch thick. It's plastic. It has every measurement known to man and a few angles. And we use it to cut our fabric. Now, a quilting ruler is different still. All right. A quilting ruler is a thick piece of acrylic designed to help you make specific lines and shapes as you quilt your quilt. It is not the same ruler as a cutting ruler. This one is usually closer to a quarter of an inch thick. All right, sometimes a little thinner than that if you have a low shank machine, but most of us are going to be working with high shank rulers, whether we're on a domestic or on a long arm. Here I'm on a Bernina. I also work on a Burnette. I also work on a handy quilter. Um, I worked on a Juki for a while. All of these use the same quarter inch thick quilting ruler. Okay, that thickness is really important because you do not, you do not want this ruler going under your needle, right? So this is designed to pair with a ruler foot. Let me peek ahead and see if I have a picture of a ruler foot. Nope, I did not. Okay. Ruler foot. Looks like a little metal donut. Has tall sides, okay? It's wonderful because you can also use it for free motion quilting, and this is part of the magic of ruler work, in my opinion, right, is that you can seamlessly transition back and forth between the two. So I am very happily quilting feathers. I need to stitch in the ditch and add some dot-to-dot -dot accents or perhaps a grid and then carry on stitching ribbon candy. I do not have to change my foot, right? So this foot and this ruler go together. Uh, think of like those, what were they called? Like the spirographs or whatever, those gears in the 90s that you could make the cool shapes with because you just locked them together and then drew with your pen and magic happened. I was never very good at them, but you might know what I'm talking about. Uh, so this is a safety feature that these two go together to make sure that the ruler is not hitting the needle, that our fingers are not ending up under the needle, uh, all of those good things. All right. So when in doubt, by the way, and I mentioned this, most of us are going to be using a high shank ruler, but when in doubt, opt for a high shank ruler. Okay. Um, the only downside that could happen if you have a funky shank on your machine or you have a low shank on your machine and you get the high shank ruler is that you may not be able to put the ruler like to the back or at a back angle. And I generally discourage putting your ruler back there anyway. It is hard to control it. Okay. Now, while I'm still talking a mile a minute, because y'all are being very quiet in the chat, I hope that's because you're sewing. Like I hope that you're getting a little bit of sewing time in while I'm talking your ear off. I would love to know before I proceed, proceed any further, what is your biggest question or conundrum about quilting with rulers? As we're going through these three myths, I also want to make sure that whatever big question is taking up space in your brain right now, that you leave here with an answer. Okay, so drop those in the chat for me while I work my way through this slide. So using rulers is a really cool way to finish your quilts because it allows you to add all kinds of geometric shapes to your quilt. That kind of precision and crisp line is almost impossible in the other, honestly, even walking foot quilting, it's really, really tricky because getting spacing even. Um, if you have done straight line quilting with your walking foot, and done any kind of like odd spacing with it, you know how tricky it can be to be like, okay, my foot is like this random, you know, five eighths of an inch or however wide a walking foot is and whatever the space from the needle to the edges and how am I gonna aim for, so you end up either having to do a lot of marking, right? Um, or you're doing things like putting tape down on the, the quilt to try to get your lines even or you have to have that funky little bar that goes out to the side, right? Like. It's difficult to even get this kind of precision with a walking foot. And even then it's limited to like truly just straight lines. You can't get a lot of precision outside of that. Whereas rulers allow you to have very precise lines, uh, not just with straight lines, but also with various curves. Okay. You can see on this example, in fact, there's some continuous curves um, and things that would be very difficult to do with a walking foot because of all the back and forth. Right. So this gives you a different level of precision and flexibility than other techniques you may have used in the past. Um, Michelle says, I think it'll be a good addition to the free motion quilting that I'm still learning 100%. Um, especially if you do any kind of quilting on a frame, I think this is a must have skill for all folks finishing their own quilts. Um, the next myth we're gonna address is whether or not this is just for long arm quilters and it is not, but it is common that long arm quilters uh, hit this sooner right? That they're like, oh, I literally can't do a straight line without a ruler. Okay. So we've talked about what a quilting ruler is, how we're going to use it. Let's dive into these myths. Myth number one, quilting with rulers is only for long arm quilters. Ooh, let's see. I see some good stuff popping up. Susan says, my hardest struggle is keeping the ruler still. Yes. 
And I wish I had a magic solution for you on that. Practice is a really good one. And practice not just because of um, getting used to handling the ruler, but practice because of literally building up the muscles to help hold it in place because it's it's smaller muscles than what we use with free motion quilting. Um, so they take a little bit of finesse in that regard. Um, also playing around with at what angles do you have the most control of the ruler? Yeah. Uh, Kara says, how do we approach ruler quilting on a queen size quilt with a domestic Bernina machine? Um, you eat an elephant one bite at a time. Uh, I would probably start in the middle if you can and just work your way out or I would work in rows. Uh, but yeah, it's just going to be step by step, right? I, that's awesome. And it's absolutely doable. It's just going to require some patience. All right. So myth number one, quilting with rulers is only for long arm, quilt, uh, long arm quilters. False. I do find that long arm quilters, like I said, feel this need faster right? That if you're quilting on the frame, you're going to feel this need faster because you cannot jerry-rig a straight line as easily, right? When I first learned how to free motion quilts and I was first finishing my own quilts, uh, if there was stitch in the ditch or the like that I wanted to do, you know, I was like, oh, I'll just put my walking foot on first and I'll knock all that out. And then I'll switch to my free motion foot and go back in free motion, right? But that's not really an option you're going to pursue on the long arm. You're not going to base a whole quilt, to run it under your domestic with a walking foot to then load it on your long arm frame. So long armers do tend to feel this friction a little bit faster, um, but I think quilters on all machines benefit from having at least foundational ruler quilting skills. So foundational ruler quilting skills, I would consider to be stitch in the ditch, um, echo quilting, usually a little bit of dot to dot quilting, ruler assisted switchbacks and grids. Those of you who may have done the ruler quilting challenge me last week or back in March may recognize that we cover a lot of those foundations in that challenge because I think that's the bare minimum that anyone wanting to finish their own quilts should have in their toolbox. All right. Um, Susie said, I actually found quilters with a ruler easier on the domestic than the long arm. That makes sense because you can control with both hands, right? If you're quilting on the long arm, you can see here, I'm going to have one hand down holding the ruler and the other hand up controlling the machine. Right. Whereas if I am using both hands on my uh, domestic, I can kind of move everything at once. So I get that, Susie. Makes sense. And, you know, and quilting is just so many motor skills. So many. That's why it's so good for us. Like this is why it's good for our brains and our bodies. It's also why we find it tiring. Like I put together three massive T-shirt quilts while we were on this little mini vacation this weekend um, because my brain was just like, if you don't bring them, you're going to think about them the whole time. So like bring the sewing machine and, and, you know, you can quote with a view. And I was exhausted every night when I finished putting one together because it's a lot of motor skills. So yeah, absolutely. Um, for a long time, like I said, I didn't understand why I would use the ruler on my domestic. I was like, I have a walking foot. And then I realized how much crisper my free motion quilting could be, how much smoother my entire quilting experience could be if I could do these types of motifs, my very geometric straight line stitch in the ditch grid, et cetera, and my very organic free motion quilting side by side. It reduced my overall thread break. It reduced the mental energy of how I had to make my quilting plans, right? And y'all know, I love a good detailed quilting plan that for that queen size quilt, Karen, I would have everything drawn out. I would have, I would have the map quest of how to quilt that quilt, right? Step one, I'm going to stitch in the ditch on these sections. Or step one, I'm skipping stitch in the ditch because it's going to make me crazy. Step two, I'm going to put in all the meanders. Step three, I'm going to, you know, I would have it like really planned out, even if it was just in my head. Uh, but by being able to do these things side by side, it reduced a lot of that fatigue. Because if I missed something, it was easier to go back and get it, right? If I quilted myself into a corner and, you know, whether I either messed up my quilting plan or just didn't go the way I thought it was going to, I could stitch in the ditch to get myself out. So that reduced thread breaks, that really decreased a lot of time and made the whole process a lot more enjoyable. All right. Any questions about quilting with rulers on the domestic on the long arm? Bum, 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 bum. Or like, Maybe you're sitting there going, I just don't believe you. I still don't think I need to learn how to quilt with rulers, which I would be a little surprised because you're here. But hey, come at me. Like, I, you know, let's talk about it. I'm probably not going to put up much of a fight, right? Because here's the other thing. All right. Big asterisk. Y'all know this about me. Quilting is for joy units, right? So I'm going to make a case for you as we are continuing through these myths of why I think 
that having the skill set of quilting with rulers is going to add to the joy units of your quilting journey, right? At the same time, and I've had this happen with a few folks who have tried free motion quilting, right? They sign up for intro to free motion quilting. They go through, they learn the motifs, and they send me the sweetest email and say, I would really prefer just to send my tops to you and have you long arm. Like that brings me more joy than trying to figure this out for myself. Awesome. You're not, you're not going to find the quilt police here, right? Like you're always free to disagree with me. So I'm going to make a case for why I think this is going to add joy units um, and why I think the RQA is going to be really fun and add joy units and add community and help you finish quilts. Um, and you can say, I'm a whole quilting rock star and I don't want to, and that's okay too, right? All right, let's keep going. Quilting plans are so much fun, Karen. Oh my gosh. Myth number two. Quilting with rulers is an easy way to avoid learning free motion quilting. Spoiler. False. <laughs> I've heard more than one quilter comment that they don't plan to learn free motion quilting. They just want to buy a bunch of specialty rulers to quilt free motion quilting like, uh, like shapes on their quilt. Um, in reality, though, Again, my opinion, my experience. Um, pushing a quilt and ruler underneath your domestic is a whole lot like free motion quilting. So learning the basics of free motion quilting so you understand how to control a quilt under the machine before you add, like we've been talking about with Susie and others here in the chat, before you add the motor skill of having to also control a ruler, I think is absolutely key. And Susie, I love Susie. Susie's like, rulers are a free motion skill. I agree completely. 100%. I got an email this week. Someone was interested in Ruler Quilting Academy, uh, but they were concerned because they didn't have any free motion skills. And, you know, Ruler Quilting Academy, we're enrolling now, but our lessons are going to start in January because none of y'all have any time over the next month. I know that. I just want to set you up for success in 2024, right? And I was like, you know what? You've got a whole month. I know that it's a really busy month. But like, I would get like a base level of free motion quilting skills in between now and when our class starts. I think it's going to set you up for success. I think it's going to make it better, right? The other thing is some of these more complex free motion quilting motifs, it is faster to know how to free motion them than to have to finagle that ruler every which way. They make wonderful feather rulers. If you've ever watched someone, and not many of us have because the internet is the way that it is, but if you've ever watched someone use one of those rulers in real time, I could have quilted that feather free motion and baked a batch of cookies and the time that it took to finagle that ruler, right? And there, there are quilters who would disagree with me on that. But I think there are some things that is better to free motion and some things that is better to do with rulers because I think they are inseparably interlinked skills, just like Susie pointed out for us, right? So even if you know you prefer to work with rulers, knowing the basics of free motion quilting is going to help build up habits, posture, muscle strength, coordination, and understanding of how to move the quilt, hand-eye coordination, all right? And also, once you've learned some free motion quilting, you're going to find adding rulers in to be super important for things like stitching in the ditch like we've been able to talk about, okay? Um, one last piece with that, if you're like, I'm just going to do the rulers, I feel comfortable with that. Uh, honestly, bear in mind the expense of rulers, right? Even a straight line, if you practice enough, you can do a decent job freehanding, right? Um, but if you're wanting to have a ruler for every single free motion quilting motif that you might ever want to quilt, um, that's going to be a lot of space. It's going to be a lot of money, right? I would recommend investing some time into learning how to master some free motion motifs and invest instead in a core group of rulers for very specific situations. All right. I'm here to save some money and add to the dual units. What can I say? Myth number three, and perhaps the most important one. Quilting with rulers is only for super experienced quilters. Also false. <laughs> Y'all aren't surprised, right? Okay. Stitch in the ditch is a key skill for all quilters on both domestic and long arm quilting machines. All right. Uh, it is important for emphasizing specific areas of the quilt, moving from section to section on a quilt, because if I can stitch in the ditch instead of breaking thread, I'm going to do that every single time. If the connection lines bother you on the back, pick a busy back because it'll save your sanity. Um, and using rulers is important as an entire quilting plan. Sometimes stitching in the ditch is the plan, right? Depending on the scale of the quilt, depending on what you're doing. Um, folks who were with me recently at our Star Island retreat at the beginning of November, shameless shout out, we are having another retreat in January. Would love to see you there. It's the best time. Um, but I loved my fabric choices and it was such a delight 
to get to make my own Star Island pattern. That's this pattern that's on this panel, by the way. I haven't pieced that block in I don't know when, right? It's been a really long time because I primarily teach quilting. So I don't get to spend as much time piecing. And having the shop has helped that some. Having friends come around me and encouraging me to take the time to make my own patterns again has helped a lot. Uh, but I've had a lot of like really happy, happy, joy, joy feelings about having pieced a Star Island block. So the quilting plan was to stitch in the ditch, right? And I was able to whip out my ruler and knock it out in no time at all, right? So I recommend mastering stitch in the ditch with a ruler ASAP. And while you're at it, you a few others, right? Because it is kind of catching and fun and you've invested in the ruler at that point. So why not maximize the joy units? All right. So three myths as a quick review, right? Let me go back so we can see them again. One, quilting with rulers is for everyone on all machines, not just for our long armors. Number two, we want to learn free motion quilting and ruler quilting. They are interlinked skills and they help each other and they help you succeed as a quilter, all right? Myth number three, it is not for super experienced quilters. In fact, as a general rule, I think just stack all those skills on top of each other. Um, I know one of y'all mentioned that, you know, you're still in the process of learning free motion quilting. Let's see, Michelle, who's been working through FMQA, right? I think layering those skills right on top of each other instead of like, I'm going to master my free motion column and then I'm going to master my ruler quilting column and then I'm going to master this other thing over here, right? I think making stair step progress on these things simultaneously is the best way to learn. It helps keep us from getting too in our head because action cures fear. So staying in motion, staying in action, continuing the skill build is an awesome way to live as a quilter, right? I think it keeps things feeling fresh. I keep it things think it keeps the joy units high and especially somewhere like at String and Story. Um, it's going to keep you in the community and keep you hanging out with your quilty friends like we're doing right now. All right. Let's see. Julie says, am I understanding correctly that learning FMQ prior to taking Ruler Quilting Academy is a good idea? Well, we just learned that from YouTube. Julie, great question. Um, I would have a little bit of experience and a little bit of experience might be like practice the meander, right? Like this is, you don't need to go all the way through Free Motion Quilting Academy. I would recommend Intro to Free Motion Quilting. That's my foundational course that teaches four motifs. But honestly, I've got a couple of videos on YouTube that talk about the meander, like jump on there and practice it, right? I think it is easier if you have moved a quilt under a machine before you add a ruler. And so if you are jumping into Ruler Quilting Academy with me, which I really hope you are, I think it would be awesome. You know, over the next few weeks or even in the early weeks of RQA, make sure you're playing around with some free motion quilting motifs as well, because I think it's going to help. I think it's going to improve your experience. Does that make sense? So it's not like a, let me sidebar and do this whole thing and then come over, right? Oh, is our classes and programs link broken again? Give me just a second, y'all, as I deep sigh. Um, is that how, let me see if this is on the home page. We have a few digital, okay. The digital programs is working in person is broken at the moment. Um, we recently migrated our shop to Shopify and we're just still in the process of finding broken links. So my deep sigh is just at like, Yes, we're still dealing with that. So my apologies for the inconvenience. Um, if you head to stringofstory.com under digital education at the top, you should be able to find everything. Um, In-person classes, if you head to shop and then click through to the classes, it'll be a little bit easier that way. So hopefully that helps, Julie. All right. So how can you become a confident ruler quilting rock star? Well, you've already done you know, the best and most important part, in my opinion, and that's you're, you're here and you're investigating it. Um, and as I mentioned and totally, you know, gave the game away at the beginning of our time together, I would love to invite you to Ruler Quilting Academy. And I'm going to do that in just a second. But first, I want to know what other questions can I answer for y'all? Because I have blazed through this. And I, if y'all have let me like, I wanted to ask a thing, but we're moving really fast. Take a second, ask those questions in there. Um, if you have questions about RQA, I'm going to share about the program and then I will absolutely answer those as well. Um, but as far as why ruler quilting, who is ruler quilting for, is ruler quilting applicable to you? Uh, if I have left any questions unanswered, please go ahead and ask this so that I can answer them. I got to hydrate. I am running a half marathon in, Lord have mercy, 11 hours. 
I have got to be hydrated. <laughs> sit here and slurp my water. Because road tripping home from vacation right before a big run is, you know, great timing. It's, it's exactly that principle of like I was just saying, right? With like, you don't need to put free motion quilting in a pillar and then put roller quilting in a pillar and do those things in isolation, right? I think that's true of life in general. I think um, it doesn't serve any of us to necessarily live our life in isolated columns. I think life is all one like big messy puddle, right? And if we can find the right people to be navigating that with, like that's exactly the way to do it. So here we are. I think y'all are my people. So with that, I would love to invite you to continue spending time together inside of Ruler Quilting Academy. Um, this is our, is it our third, second signature course? I, would, I guess it would qualify as our second signature course that we ever made here at String and Story, one that was asked for for a really long time. Um, and inside RQA, we've developed a proven method to build on lessons week over week. So if you took the challenge with me, we're gonna build on the challenge. If you jump right in with RQA, we're gonna teach you the foundations out of the get-go and build from there, right? Um, in eight weeks of step-by-step -step video lessons designed to help you become confident quilting with rulers. And we really cover the gamut of this. We start at Stitch in the Ditch, we end with some pretty complex geometric designs like the Vortex, which is one of my favorites. It's very fun, right? To add lots of interesting geometric designs to your quilts. Oh, Julie, thank you. The one at the bottom. I will make sure to go take a peek at that. Here's a little bit of information from Elizabeth. who recently took RQA. She said, I love your videos. You explain things clearly. You're inspiring. And I love that you sometimes have a bobble and keep going. That means that I can too. Listen, we're all about progress, not perfection around here. All right. Your Q&A sessions are fun and your enthusiasm is contagious. Thank you, Elizabeth. Mary says, I really enjoyed RQA and felt like I learned a lot. I took your introduction to rulers in 2021 and RQA took my skills to a new level. Um, and I love sharing this. Uh, because even if you've played around with rulers in the past and you have kind of that foundational skill we were talking about, we're really going to level up in the course of this eight weeks together. So what's included in Ruler Quilting Academy, right? Um, those of you who are familiar with Free Motion Quilting Academy, you're going to recognize this format. It's very, very similar. Um, you have a lifetime access to the following, all right? All the skills you need for successful ruler quilting from start to finish in the form of six video units full of tips, tricks, motifs uh, from stitch in the ditch to complex clamshell borders and beyond. Um, and I have a toolbox full of ruler quilting techniques that I'm going to teach you inside of these units. Um, so, Julie, to answer your question, is this live? The lessons are pre recorded. So, each Monday for six weeks, you're going to have a new unit drop. All right. And you will watch those videos on your own time. You have a lifetime access to those videos. So you can watch them 17 times. You can watch them 1700 times. You can watch them until you are so very, very sick of my voice, but you understand how to do the motif, right? The live portion comes in these Q and A's. So we also do weekly Q and A sessions together. They're a lot like this, right? I jump on, I am a bubbly little overflowing ball of energy because I don't know how to exist any other way. Um, Y'all bring your questions, whether you've asked them ahead of time inside of our online community or you join me live. Um, the asking them ahead of time feature is really lovely because of time zones. So if it's not possible for you to be on with us live, you can ask those questions beforehand. I can still answer them and then you can watch the replay of the Q&A and still get your answer, right? But if you like this live aspect, if you want to be able to come on and be like, I am about to pull my eyebrows out hair by hair, because I cannot figure out how to do this clamshell, please help, right? We can do that. That's that's what this time is for. Um, and then because you have lifetime access, just a little asterisk, when we do this class in the future, so we call it a cohort when a group of folks goes through together, um, the next time there's a new cohort, you can also tune into those live q and So you have ongoing support um, so that you have that element because life happens, right? So more on that in a second. There's a full color workbook with doodle pages, illustrations, tips, tricks, all the good stuff to make sure that you are fully set up for success. And so that once you've gone through these videos and you feel like you have a really good working knowledge of all of these motifs, if you just need a quick reminder, a quick reference, you can simply flip through your workbook instead of having to be like, oh my gosh, where was that video? What unit was it in? It was at minute, you know, three minutes and 52 seconds where she gave me the tip that I needed, right? You can have everything right there in your workbook. 
All right. And you have these ongoing updates and support right now. Uh, we have what we have. We call the old school filming, right? I have set up a tripod and I have sat there with it, looking at the quilt the way that I'm looking at the quilt. And we are quilting there right together. Just filmed simply through my iPhone. It is on our schedule. Um, hopefully to get this filmed in 2024. It did not work out to do it this year the way we had hoped because, you know, life happens. Sometimes things change. But at some point when this gets refilmed, when we add more to this class, when another cohort goes through and I'm doing Q&As with them, you have access to all of that as well, right? So this is a class that we're really going to set you up for success and make sure that you have that ongoing support even beyond these eight weeks because we want you to feel supported, loved, cared for, all those good things. All right. So there is a one-time tuition payment of $247 to jump in with us. Um, or, and let me, excuse me just a second while I run and go grab this. Um, oh, this is a great question about rulers. And I am going to answer in just a second. Oh, it's going to make me log in. Dang nabbit. <laughs> oh, dear. I want to make sure that I know the correct numbers for the payment plan. Oh, you know what? I bet that it is on the page. Full tuition, $247 or three payments of $85 since that did not make it on the slide. So full tuition, $247 one time. And that includes all the updates and all the ongoing support for as long as String and Story is doing RQA, right? Um, or three payments of $85. I know there's a lot going on this year. If it's easier to break it up, um, we like to offer that, right? So I've dropped the link in the chat, stringandstory.com forward slash RQ Academy. Enrollment is open until November 27th. Um, Mary, I love that. The Q&A vault with past cohorts is very helpful. You know, and some, maybe it's because you need to go find an answer to a question, right? Maybe you just want a little extra company in your sewing room and you want me chattering in your ear for a minute. Like that vault is there for you to be able to go back and access. I tend to explain things a little bit differently every time I explain them. So you may find your question answered a couple of different ways as I'm trying to kind of look at it from different angles and help different folks wrap their heads around what they're doing, right? I love that. To answer this question about rulers, I made a whole big deal about how quilting rulers can be pricey, right? That was part of myth number two. Um, and Or was it myth number three? I've already lost track. Travel brain. Um, so what rulers are we going to use inside this class to help mitigate the fact that rulers can be costly? The number one ruler that you absolutely must have is a ruler with a straight edge, right? We use the Every Angle Ruler by Amanda Murphy. Um, my personal favorite ruler is a different brand, um, but I teach with and I promote Amanda Murphy's ruler because it is the one that I can make readily available to you. And I want us to be on the same ruler as much as possible. It just makes things easier. So the every angle ruler, um, you're going to need some kind of curve, right? So usually I recommend you need one gentle curve and one really sharp curve for things like um, continuous curves like moving corner to corner and things like clamshells, right? So a gentle curve and a sharp curve. Um, we use the every curve set inside of Ruler Quilting Academy with the option to also purchase the every circle set. Uh, because once you move beyond this class, you may be like, yeah, I want to add circles on stuff too. And we don't teach circles as fully inside of our QA. Uh, but once you've mastered a clamshell, you just keep going around the circle to make a circle. It's awesome. You've got this. Okay. So straight edge, some sort of gentle curve, some sort of sharp curve. If you want to buy the exact sets that we offer at String and Story, that's Amanda Murphy's Every Angle, Amanda Murphy's Every Curve, and Amanda Murphy's Every Circle for a total of nine rulers in three sets. Okay. Great questions. Um, Mary says, sometimes you answer questions that I hadn't thought of yet. I love that. I love being able to alleviate challenges before you even arrive at them. Beverly said, I had to do the border lessons and then I came to, I can apply for graduation. Yay! Really need to get it done with the quilt for my granddaughter for Christmas. I love that, Beverly. So good. So here's the perks of Ruler Quilting Academy. Ruler Quilting Academy allows you to learn to quilt with rulers from the privacy and comfort of your own home. It strategically teaches you how to use a core collection of rulers, like we just talked about, rather than asking you to purchase the one trillion rulers available on the market, right? I'm going to show you how to have a key collection, make the most out of that. And most everything you need to do, you can do either just with those rulers, just with free motion, or by mixing your free motion and those rulers together. All right. Ruler Quilting Academy is ready when you are, regardless of geography or time zone, with on-demand pre-recorded video lessons. One of our rock stars here this evening, uh, Lion Team One, aka Sue. 
um, is here from the UK. Sue, if you jump into RQA, you don't have to be up at one in the morning in order to be on with me, right? First of all, our Q&As tend to be in the morning Eastern time, so that helps as well. Um, but also that these lessons are pre-recorded and they're accessible to you at a time that works for you. Conveniently, String of Story is also pretty big at this point. We have a lot of quilting rock stars around the world. So even if you're up at a time that is the middle of the night, for me and you're quilting, but you're posting in the community, chances are somebody else is up too. And somebody else is online that may be able to help you get unstuck or just be moral support until someone gets online that can't answer your question, right? Ruler Quilting Academy allows you ongoing access to the instructor. That would be me. Uh, so that you never feel alone or stuck and you can get near real time help during our live streamed Q&A sessions. And I think just the absolute cherry on top, Ruler Quilting Academy connects you with each other. I love watching quilting rock stars connect from all over the world and share in the opportunity of building skills together, cheering for each other, sharing their work and getting to celebrate huge wins. And I think that is a really special part of what we do. It's awesome to get to learn in the privacy and comfort of our own homes. But even that can sometimes feel lonely. So having our online community where you can connect is a really special part of this. Megan says, I loved the permission to play inside of Ruler Quilting Academy. Great videos that show us how to do each motif, but no firm requirement on how we had to use it in the final project. Those of you who have gone through FMQA, you have your sampler and you have your whole cloth in FMQA. We have a set of placemats in Ruler Quilting Academy. I really thought this would be difficult, but once I got going, it isn't that hard. Practice is fun. You give us the confidence to get past our fears and get started. I really enjoyed this class, possibly even more than the free motion one. How awesome is that? Um, how long do the live Q&A questions go? Great question. Um, we have them weekly during the duration of the course. So there's six to eight, depending on the exact scheduling for each cohort. Um, and then every time we have a new cohort, we have more live Q&A sessions. In between those sets of Q&A sessions, we do have our Kajabi community. So our classes are hosted in a platform called Kajabi. Think of that like our classroom. Inside Kajabi, we have built community message boards. Um, and those are a bit more like study hall, right? That's where you can ask your questions, where you can share your work. And that is open all the time, right? So you can jump in and share even when we're between cohorts. You can ask questions. So you've really got that ongoing support element. Gail says, I loved learning how to use the rulers to make different shapes, backgrounds, fillers, and borders. I loved Holly Ann's realness in her teaching and her positive, encouraging attitude. Listen, we quilt for joy units. That is, that's the pinnacle. Those of you who are in the ruler quilting challenge with me last week, you know, I got on my soapbox on like two or three separate occasions about the point of this is fun. We have lots of responsibilities out in the world, lots of hard things, what quilting, we do this for the joy. We do it for the fun of it. Right. And so whenever I am teaching, that is always my goal is I want you to understand that you are a whole rock star and that I believe in you deeply. Um, and that even if a new skill feels overwhelming at first, we're going to find the play in it together. Beverly says, I love Holly Ann's enthusiasm and positivity, as well as her energy. Love being able to go back to each lesson to watch and practice a design. That is so key to be able to watch over and over again. I know uh, that we have all different learning styles represented in our Quilting Rockstars community. There are those of you who are like me that you're very auditory. You want to be told how to do it, and then you're going to figure out how to do it. There are some of you that are very visual. Being able to watch me do it is absolutely key. And some of y'all need to literally be doing it and watching and pausing and doing it and watching and pausing, right? And so we do everything that we can, even in a digital platform, to really honor the auditory, the visual, and the kinesthetic learners among us. Julie says, total newbie. How can I tell if I have a low shank machine? Super technical answer, Julie. You ready? Got a pen and paper? I'm teasing you. Google it. It's really Google like your machine shank height. So like Juki J150 shank. And it's going to give you information. Most machines are a high shank. If you have a FAF, they tend to be a slant shank. They are difficult. It is hard to find a ruler foot for those. Um, some machines like Singers and Big Box Brothers might be low shank, right? So that's going to be important when you're finding, mostly when you're finding your foot. If for some reason your uh, machine company doesn't make a foot, um, almost all of them do make a foot for almost all their machines. There are a few exceptions, okay? Um, and then as far as rulers, like I said, I generally default to having a high shank ruler regardless. So 
for what that's worth. Uh, what do you sew on, Julie? I might happen to know off the top of my head because I've Googled this a lot lately for folks. <laughs> So rock stars, if you are ready, I would love for you to come be a ruler quilting rock star with me. Come jump into Ruler Quilting Academy. Um, we are going to be having an absolute ball. To answer a few of those logistical questions, y'all, I don't think have answered yet um, or haven't asked yet, but I want to try to answer them ahead of time. I know that we are heading into a, a busy holiday season for many of us, right? Um, a time when school schedules are disrupted, sometimes work schedules are funky. Uh, so what's going to happen if you jump into RQA with me, right? Enrollment is open until the 27th. So a little less than a week away. All right. For a couple days after enrollment ends, we're going to have what we call our new student orientation. So you're going to get an email from me each day with information about the start of class, your schedule, your workbook, making sure you have a complete supply list so you can do your shopping over the holidays, um, put things on your holiday list, et cetera. Um, and we're going to make sure that you know how to get logged into Kajabi, into the classroom, into the community, right? And the community boards will be open from that point forward. You can introduce yourselves. You can chat amongst yourselves. You can ask questions about supplies, et cetera. All right. Then after we have those few days of new student orientation, we're going to put a pin in it, right? So that community board will be, will be open. You'll be able to chat in there. But as far as lessons go, we're going to put a pin in it. We're going to get through the month of December. We're going to get to that point in December where we're like, what day is it? I have eaten so much cheese and I have no idea what day of the week it is, right? We all kind of get to that point. What, December 28th is usually that point for me, right? Right after that, we'll head into the new year. And I think it's January 2nd, maybe the 3rd. We'll have a little reorientation of like, oh, hey, hello. Remember how you did that awesome thing back in November? And you said, I want to learn how to quilt with rulers in 2024. That is one of my important New Year's resolutions. And I am going to set myself up for success. And I'm going to go ahead and sign up for this class. Remember how you did that? Awesome. We're here now. It's 2024. It's time to do the thing. I hope you're ready. And then that second week of January, we will start our lessons. Okay. So I share all that. I share it kind of silly because I can't help myself. But I do want to give you that peace of mind of like, if you are just absolutely slammed, for the next six weeks, you are not going to miss a thing. Okay. We're doing this now. I want you to think about future Michelle, future Mary, uh, future Julie, future you in January, who is going to be probably where you are cold, maybe rainy, maybe snowy, right? The holiday season will have passed and it'll be time to jump into a new thing, right? Julie, it is probably a low shank if you have a brother. Um, if you bought it from a dealer, I would give them a phone call and say, hey, do you have a ruler quilt, a ruler quilting foot for this? Um, if you did not buy it from a dealer, I would literally get online, search brother, your model ruler foot. It will probably be like the first hit on Google. Um, Sewingmachinesplus.com, um, sewingmachine.com are some of the common ones that come up really high that they carry all the brands and all the things, right? And so chances are, uh, that you'll be able to find it like first hit of Google. It's amazing. It, it's a miracle worker. I don't know how I'd do my job without Google, honestly. Julie says, if we sign up, will we have a list of supplies so we can ask Santa for some of it? Yes. Um, absolutely. You will. Yes. And I'm in the process of figuring out how gift cards work with the new online shop. But yes, please send, send your people links to the String and Story shop. Um, when I say the second week, do I mean January 8th? Scrolling. Yes. Unit one will release on January 8th. And that's all of our very foundational stuff. Remember, you have lifetime access to this. And I generally have found with folks going through this um, class, almost everybody misses at least one week, right? They're traveling. They got something going on, whatever, whatever. Um, it is an easy one to play catch up on. And at the end of our few weeks together, we scheduled in a couple of practice weeks while I'm at QuiltCon um, so that you will have opportunity to go back, play catch up on any videos that you missed or didn't get to watch as they were releasing and be working on those final projects. Okay. Yes. Any more questions? This is so exciting. And yes, please, please send your folks to String and Story to shop for the holidays. I always get gushy this time of year about shopping small. I think we probably, all of us small business owners do. Um, but I just want y'all to know every single day that we have been having uh, our Rockstar Appreciation Week flash sales. 
and every day for basically the rest of the holiday season. At every available opportunity, I am picking up my phone and I'm hitting refresh on my email and I am doing an out loud by name happy dance every time one of y'all shops with us, okay? Anyone who is around me at the, any given time when one of y'all places an order with us knows your name because it means so much to us that you choose to shop small. So I really appreciate it. And I appreciate y'all making time to hang out with me tonight. It's the night before US Thanksgiving, right? For a lot of y'all, there's a lot going on in your homes. There's a lot going on with your people. Um, taking the time to be here uh, not only means a lot to me because it feels supportive of string and story, right? But I love that you've set the side of time for, aside for you. You say, future me wants to be able to master the skill. I want to come and learn a little bit about it now and find out if this class is right for me. So way to go, Rockstar. That is big Rockstar energy. All of y'all are amazing. Thank you so much for your time tonight. I hope I see each and every one of you in RQA, whether you're new to RQA or you're continuing through with us. Uh, those of you who are already in RQA or maybe you've been in FMQA, if you've got encouraging words about how you have found these classes to be helpful, please drop them in the chat. Please welcome your new fellow rock stars into this class as they start showing up in Kajabi. Um, and like I said, it really means the world that y'all choose to shop small with us. So thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving tomorrow. If you are gathering with friends and family, if you're taking time uh, just to practice gratitude, I am thankful for each and every one of you. You've been top of my list for eight Thanksgivings now. Uh, and I will see all of y'all soon. Bye for now. Last thing. Don't forget to go check out the Ruby Star Flash sale. <laughs> Listen, it's a really good sale. I don't want y'all to miss out. All right. Mwah. Good night, my dears. Have a wonderful evening, and I'll see y'all soon.